So welcome everyone. Super excited to be here tonight. Um, it is Wednesday and we have um, the fantastic Carly Wood on the call. She is a nine star elite coach. Um, I think she said she was an executive leader on the leadership ladder. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the highest rank? think so yeah which is like amazing if you guys know anything about the leadership ladder that's like amazing amazing it basically means that she is like a rock star team and she's going to be talking to us about like how to really keep your team together and motivation 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 and leadership she's um, a success club legend so that means she's also extremely consistent with her personal business as well as super consistent with her team um, she is like a master at holding down rank and making sure sort of like everyone's on board with everyone's goals. Not only are you helping your team reach their goals, but your, your team is helping you reach your goals. So um, with that, I'm going to let you take it away and I'm going to mute all of us. Hey, well, I'm just really excited to be here. Anytime I have the opportunity to share um, with other teams, I think I'm very humbled and I'm very excited and uh, it just fuels me up too because I started at a place where um, I like to share a little bit about my backstory so you guys can get a feel for you know who I am, where I came from. Because a lot of times I think we see successful coaches and we think, oh my God, I cannot attain that or it happened overnight and we don't know much about where they started. So um, I have battled suicide in my past. I have uh, battled eating disorders in my past. I lost my best friend in a boating accident almost six years ago in a boat that I was supposed to be on. So when I um, came into coaching, I did not uh, have any self-worth. And my biggest lie that I told myself was that I was not good enough or that I wasn't enough. So I shared that with you guys because all the things that Jillian just said about, you know, accolades and this and that, they didn't come from me signing up and being like, oh my God, I'm this great coach and I'm going to do this. It came from really me uh, growing myself. And I did not know my coach Nikki before I started. I am fortunate enough that one of my girlfriends told me to check out her on social media. So that's kind of my background and how I came into this business. <laughs> I actually sat for two months um, and did nothing. I sat at my computer, my little phone, and iPad, and I cried. And I told my fiance, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I got into this. Like, what am I doing? So I share that because everything that I'm going to share with you guys is stuff that I've really learned and really worked on myself. So I've got a few notes here that I wrote down when I was thinking about this call because it is kind of like a not a tough topic. It's a great topic, but it is like to each is their own and challenging. So I'm going to share with you guys like what's worked for me and some of this stuff overlaps. And then I'll share my screen with you guys and go through two other slides and then talk a little bit about holding rank. So the first thing is personal development. I know that we hear it all the time, but I want to tell you guys that I didn't do personal development for six months into coaching, six months. And the day that my business started to change is the day that I dove into myself because you're never going to attract people that are going to be more successful than you. And I don't like the term better than you, but you're not going to attract people who want this more than you. So you've got to constantly be working on yourself in order to attract people to your team that want this. Um, you're going to lead by example all the time. I see a lot of coaches making the mistake of telling their coaches what to do versus having a we mentality by leading the way, showing them what to do. Um, I've created a system with my team where duplication is very easy. You know, I can show them what I've done. They can do that and duplicate that with their, with their team. Um, I'm very good at sharing my struggles, sharing my mistakes. I feel like everything that I've gone through as a coach, the downs are there for me because someone on my team is going to be going through that. You know, I'm, it, it's happening for a reason. Um, I do something called bridging the gap with my team, and I can get into that with you guys later on at the end of the call if you want to hear about it. Um, I'm really, really big into the energy that I bring into my life and my team. What we focus on expands. So if I'm sitting there focusing on what I don't have, where I'm not at, what rank I'm not at, I'm going to get more of that. Okay. So you've got to focus on what you want, focus on what you can control and focus on where you're going to grow like as a person. 
Also, one thing I had to do, was, I had to take a look at my surroundings. You are an accumulative of the, of the five people that you surround yourself with. So are you hanging out with people that empower you? Are you, hang, are, are you surrounding yourself with coaches who um, maybe are more successful than you so you can learn and grow? Or are you staying inside your comfort zone because it's easy and it's comfortable there? Um, like I said before, where your attention goes, your energy flows. I'm huge on that. One thing that I did as a coach from day one is I did not let my coaches come to me complaining about anything or talking negative about stuff. I, I'm like the nicest person ever, but I would literally ignore them if they had a complaint or if they messaged me with, you know, something. There's a difference in venting and working through a problem, and there's a difference in complaining and woe is me stuff. So really controlling that energy and that concept of, of what my team culture is all about. And I have really created a team culture versus an I culture. Like I'm, I'm not motivated by rank. I'm really motivated by helping my coaches succeed and being like, this is all of us. This is not me. I could not do it without you guys. So um, another thing that I didn't, I want to tell you guys is never drag somebody because I almost quit seven months into coaching because I was dragging the people that I wanted to help versus putting my attention on the people who wanted this. Um, I already talked about surrounding yourself and then um, making sure that you're aligned with your personal life too. If there is some stuff that you're going through in your personal life, that is going to affect your business. So just making sure that you are aligned in all areas of your life is something that um, I have really been conscious about. So I'm going to share my screen really quick and talk to you guys about, can y'all see that? Yeah. Okay. So these are some things that I do with my team to keep the momentum going, to keep us like fired up, to keep that energy going and to really keep myself focused on what's important. One of the biggest things you guys is identifying self-limiting beliefs. We all have them. When I came into coaching, my self-limiting belief was that I was not good enough that I was not worthy of this, that I was not good enough for success. So when I get on my getting started right calls, I, I do a lot more listening than I do talking. I talk about what people's fears are, what's holding them back, what they're nervous about, really identifying the areas in their life where they can grow. Um, having a shatterproof why. I know all of my coaches' whys. What is going to drive them on, on the days they don't want to push? What's going to drive them on the days where they want to throw in the towel? We all have hard days, you know, coaching. There's so many ebbs and flows. And I tell my coaches to stay in the middle of the road. If they're high on a good day, great. Low on a bad day, don't take it too serious. Stay in the middle of the road. Because like anything in life, you're going to have ups and downs. So really having a shatterproof why. And that why is going to change. As you grow, um, that's going to change. And we all want to help people. We all want people to feel good about themselves. That is great. That's what drives us, but that should not be your coach's why. Your coach's why should be deeper than that. Tackling fears. The more that you guys do that, the more you're going to empower your coaches to, the, to, do, to do that. Being vulnerable, you guys, is so key. I used to think as a leader I had to have it all together and that I had to know all the answers to stuff. And by me being vulnerable and sharing my truths, my struggles, my ups and downs, that's created a culture in my team to know that like we're all in this together. Having success partners or success pods, um, I've done that with my team, and that's been great for momentum for people that are at the same level or have the same goals. I incorporate a gratitude list into my, into my days. And now that my coaches do that, it's so easy to stay focused on the things that matter and the things that we're grateful for because where, where we put our energy, that expands. So it's so easy to get sucked into losing rank, um, coaches not doing stuff. But the more you're grateful for the little things and for the things that are going good in your life, I swear, you guys, the more you're going to get more of that. Uh, be willing to share mistakes and failures. Like I said, that is something that 
I really feel like I, I go through so my team can learn from. And I share with my leaders, if you guys are going through a hard time, if you're going through things in your business, you're going through that for a reason. And that is because someone on your team is going to go through that. And they're going to need to learn from you, from what you did. Um, one thing that I do is I uh, meditate. I take quiet time, like five minutes. And I'll be honest, you guys, this is a struggle of mine, but it's really something that I try and do because I don't want to get on live or message people or uh, answer questions if I'm coming from a place of like frustration or if I'm irritated or if I'm having a bad day. So I like to quiet my mind, cut the cords of energy and uh, show up in a place where um, I'm focused and I'm like excited. And with that being said, you show up daily and you focus on what you can control. I cannot control other people. All I can do is inspire, empower, and be there for others. I cannot control what they do or don't do. What I can control is knowing what their self-limiting beliefs are and know why this means something to them. Another thing that I do is a social Sunday. We're so driven by like the business, business, business mentality that I love on my team page to see like pictures of their dogs or their kids or what they have going on on a Sunday. It just creates more of that team feel. And it's something that my team like eats up, like they love it. Um, one thing that's been huge for our team as well is doing a program start to finish as a team. So I did the ultimate reset. It's something I said that I would never do because I'm not a cook because of this, all the excuses that we come up with, you know, like I don't want to do it, blah, blah. <laughs> so what I've done is we have a, a ultimate reset group and it's running until the end of the year because this is a program where people can do, they need to do it at a time that's right for them. But just by me doing it and sharing like what was holding me back, there are so many people from not just my team, but other teams doing it too. So being willing to commit to something that is so outside of your comfort zone and sharing your journey on it, you're going to inspire your team and other people to do it. Um, involve your team in trainings. If you've got an emerald training coming up or a diamond training coming up, uh, messaging your team, inviting them to do something. One thing that I've done before summit is I've had every single one of my PS coaches pick a day and share a one to two minute video on how beach body has impacted and changed their life because it brings back that personal aspect of what we're doing instead of always like that hustle, hustle, hustle mentality. But this business is solely based on relationships and connecting with other people and figuring out why they want this. Um, I work side by side with my new coaches. I treat them like my success partners. And that's one thing that I've had to get better at, at as I've like evolved in this business is really running with coaches. When um, I started coaching, it was Nikki Whiting, Katie Flynn, Erica Flynn, Erica Massey. And we used to get on Zooms together before Nikki even had a team page and we would bounce ideas off of each other. So it wasn't Nikki leading the pack, it was all of us working together. So having that together mindset with your team and running with your new coaches is key. Um, I like to go live in my team pages and half the time I haven't even brushed my teeth or anything for the day and it just shows that realness like I can connect with my team on a different level and just show them what my day-to-day -day life is like and teach from a place of showing up as I am um, I give responsibility to my newer coaches and to my leaders so it's not so easy to bail you know they've got to have skin in the game feel a part of the team and feel as if they're leading so I strongly like encourage that it's 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 not just me leading the group, it's us together as a team. Um, write out your goals, write out your team goals and visualize it every day. Um, I try not to really, I've seen coaches on my team, I've got one coach who she forced her goals on her team, really did, instead of figuring out what her team, what her individual coaches goals were and running with them on that, she basically put her goals on her team. I want to be five star elite. I want to be five and pushed them. And now she's back to diamond, you know? So it's a matter of really figuring out what your coach's goals are, what they want from this, visualizing, painting the picture for them and empowering them so much so that they can achieve anything that they put their mind to, because that's what it is. 
you know, if Nikki had pushed me to get to diamond and forced me to get there, I probably wouldn't have held rank. And I've only dropped rank. Um, now that I'm nine star, I've only dropped down to eight star and it's my own second business center that's, that's dropping because I didn't put people on the right legs. So um, I've just worked really closely with my leaders on what empowers them. How can they grow? What do, what do they need uh, from me? How is this journey impacting their lives? How can they grow from this? Like really just honing in on them and showing up for them because that's honestly what I genuinely believe in. And other people run things differently uh, these are just things that have worked for me. And so it, it's like one of those topics where it's like, oh my God, I don't know if I'm saying the right things, but then just honing in on what I've done and what's worked. And so recognizing things too. A lot of time we get so sucked into rec recognizing rank and this and that. I've started to recognize little things. You know, someone who shared their personal story, someone just getting excited, like having that team feel of being excited and supporting everyone for what they're doing. That creates this momentum that it's like, whoa, I can do this. Like I'm starting to do the little things and that compounds into the big things. Um, one thing that I've gotten better at is asking my coaches what they need from me. Do they need accountability? Do they need you know, to be in a challenge group with me? Do they need to pair up? Do they need a success partner? Like, where can I help them grow? And so I put together, um, like, different goal things. And it's actually kind of cool because it's a questionnaire and they fill it, fill it out. But then it, I don't even need to say anything to them because it answers their own questions of where they need to grow, like what they need to do. They're kind of like, oh, the light bulb went out. Like, I know what I need to do and, and I know what I'm not doing. So that's been huge and then overcoming your own fears like i said doing things that are outside your comfort zone before coaching i never took a selfie i would never get on a team call like this the first team call i got on i blacked out don't remember anything i said so one thing that i've done is with some of my coaches whose their fears are team calls i'm like you're getting on a team call you're gonna lead it and they've done it and guys i swear one of my coaches Shared all she did was shared her story on our team called two weeks ago. She has attracted like 10 coaches to her team because of that confidence boost. Because I gave a platform for her to overcome a fear of hers, it was just my PS coaches. She shared her story authentically. We held the space for her to show up in her biggest self, and now she's like on cloud nine. So sometimes it's like tackling those fears in a safe place and it's just like move mountains for her and it just I could tear up because it's just so exciting and she's messaged me today and it's like oh my god this is so great like I feel so good um and I'm like one of those coaches like I have a soft spot I'm not like a tell you how it is in your face like boot camp style person I'm very much like a soft spot to land lovable but I'm also going to empower you and I'm also not gonna let you feed me any bullshit like because we are all the same people we just need to get over what's holding us back and if I can do that if I can start at a place where I started coaching anyone can do that I'm, I'm not special I'm not any different I just really believe in tackling those self-doubts those fears head on <laughs> and I really did black out on that team call you guys I have no idea what I said like <laughs> um another thing that I do is I really dig into to my downlines it's not my PS coaches that I work with I know everyone in my downline I give shout outs I give praise I voice message them I show up for them just like they are my own coaches because we are a team and I have seen myself get caught up in rank, get caught up in this and get caught up in that. But when I can empower somebody in our downline and they can grow and they can show up big, that's huge for our entire team. Like that's volume, that's growth. That's them turning into a leader. So not just getting sucked into your PS coaches and thinking about your own goals, really empowering your leaders and your team is where you're going to grow. Um, yeah. I always lead by example. And because we always have new people joining our team, I always share my story. I think it's so easy, like I said at the beginning of this, that people just see a successful coach and they're like, oh, well, she's got something different. No, like people need to know where you came from, how you've overcome struggles, like what this journey has meant to you. 
Um, and then the last couple things on this one is personal development. <laughs> as much personal, my team knows that I'm all about PD. I share it with my team every day. I share with what, what I'm learning, what I'm doing. And then um, for my personal self, I got a life coach and obviously I like to drink wine. <laughs> so it keeps me sane on those days where I just want to like crawl in a hole. Um, let me see. Can you guys see this next screen? No. All right. Let me see if I can do this. Let me share. Um, can y'all see that? So I'm not going to go over everything on this. I'm going to share it with you guys, but this is so life changing for leadership for your team and following this mentality of leading yourself, leading your team, and then leading your leaders. Like it really is as much as you're going to grow yourself, as much as you're going to put into yourself, that is how much your team is going to grow. So I'm going to share this with you guys. A lot of the stuff that I just talked about is what is in um, this layers of leadership, but this was so awesome for me to see and for me to do and for me to cultivate in my team and with my leaders. So um, a little bit about holding rank and how I do, how I've been able to do that is really, like I said before, investing in my coaches. Like why do they want this? Creating a vision for their life. Like when I get on getting started right calls, I do not do a lot of talking. I do a lot of what do you want out of this? Do you want to uh, pay for your shakes? Do you want to make $500 a week? Do you want to do this part time? Is this something you want to do full time? Like really creating a vision for them and leading with that. Um, I'm a firm believer that a lot of what holds people back in this is their limiting self-beliefs on that they can't do this. Are they good enough? And once you tackle that and once you tackle people's fears, they are unstoppable. They can do anything. And I live that piece of it. And the minute that I stop focusing on myself, the minute that I stop focusing on my rank, I got to get to five star, I got to do this. And I started empowering my team and I started empowering my coaches and I started really working side by side with them is the minute that it all changed. And if I've got a coach who's close to losing rank or who is about to lose rank, I empower them with the fact that they can do this. Like they can asking them, holding them accountable, you know, what are they doing? What are they not doing? How can we grow? How can we move forward? Things like that. And I have got a girl on my team who is so close. She's my, she's for me, my 10 star. I put her on my strong leg for 10 star. Um, and she wants this. She wants diamond really bad. It's her goal. She wants to do this full time. She wants to stay at home with her son. And I said to her before this call and before I did another call, I said, what can I do to help? How can I help you get to diamond? Not because yes, 10 star is great for me. Like that's awesome. I want that. I really want to help her. I want her to believe in herself. I want her to show up and prove that she can do it. And she has said, you have given me everything. You believe in me. You have given me all the tools. I have to believe in myself. I have to do this for me. So that's where um, that personal development comes into play. That's where how can she overcome these things that are holding her back. So peeling back those layers and um, really just helping her understand that she can do this. Because we all have the same tools, but it's something inside of us that's holding us back. And so uh, I love what she said. She was like, everything is provided for us as coaches to do it. We just have to believe in ourselves and know that we're worth it. So if you guys are struggling with like rank or coaches, figuring out like really what it is that is in your coach's way, like what's holding them back from attaining their goals. Um, and that's just kind of what I've got. I don't know if y'all have questions, let me know. I hope that uh, you guys learned something from that or that was helpful. I certainly did and I have questions unless someone else wants to go first. I wrote down a couple here. Does anyone have any? No, I'm going then. Okay, so you talked about like how you kind of basically ignore people that 
complain to you and don't want to actually come up with a solution, it sounded like. Like, if they're willing to work through it, you're willing to help them. But if they're just going to complain, we're good. Um, so how do you, like, there's going to be disappointment in your business, right? Like, I don't know a single coach that has never been disappointed, right? And so how do you, how do you cope? with that like how do you deal with all that disappointment it's all about my mindset like it's personal development you're gonna have disappointing things in your marriage in your business in your life and it's it's how you look at things like I really have had to dive so deep into personal development and making a mindset shift like an energy shift I'm listen, I listen to, <laughs> I have like five personal development books I'm like listening to at a time, but it really is. It's like a choice of how we want to show up in our lives and how we want to switch that into a positive. And I, and I guess coming from a place where I've been like so low that it's like, what we have is a gift. What we have is something incredible to offer people. And if I never made a dime with this business and I never rank advanced to whatever, I would do this all over again for the personal development aspect for like believing in myself for showing up. And I know that like life is not always going to go the way that I want it to go, but I have a choice of how I react to that. I have a choice of how I show up to that. I have a choice of how I show up to my coaches to that because they're going to essentially do what I do. So if I feed into the crap that they're bringing to me, then you know, I'm going to get more of that, you know? Yeah, I mean, no, it's I. It's pretty clear, like that. You know, I can tell, like, why you. I truthfully, like, I didn't know Carly that well, guys. Like, we just are in a group together, and her, like, something that I was good at, she was struggling with, and something that she's good at, I was struggling with. So this is the way this works. You just make friends, and we show up to each other's calls. Um, and so, like, it's pretty clear to me, like, why you are where you are, and like the leader that you are, especially on the. I just like I'm blown away. Um, so you talked a little bit about dragging people too, which is like, I think it's hard for a lot of us because you see the potential in someone, obviously that's why you're dragging them, but they don't see the potential in themselves, which is why they're not taking the reins and they're not. So like, how do you, if you have a goal and other people's goals don't align with your goals, like you want to be making a certain amount of money and your team isn't doing any sort of work or you want to be a certain rank and your team isn't wanting to rank advance. How do you deal with that? Do you just suggest recruiting more or how do you, cause like there's a difference between dragging and motivating, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. Like I, 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 um, I've done so different things I've done with my team. Like I do weekly volume shout outs for 250 above. I do uh, weekly success club shout outs. Um, I do like little giveaways or drawings for giveaways. Um, and if I'm, there's a difference between dragging and empowering. Like when I was dragging, physically dragging, I was way down and I wanted to quit when I'm empowering somebody and when I'm figuring out what is holding them back, like, why don't they want this? Um, that's different. And I'll be honest, like one of my diamond coaches, when I went through yoga teacher training, I, I don't like the word assistant, but she helped, she helped me out during that time. Like she was just an eye in the team page and stuff. Since she's dropped rank, she's dropped diamond. I've messaged her. I've reached out to her. She doesn't get back to me. And it's like, I can focus on dragging her or I can focus on a new Emerald who's hungry, who wants this and who deserves my attention. I have a coach on my team, you guys, for two years. She went to my very first leader, our leadership event that my coach did. She has three it's three emeralds. She's two coaches away from diamond. She has been that way for two years, and I, I can't even look at her downline because it like sucks the energy out of me. I would rather help somebody who's driven and motivated and wants this than putting my energy there. And that took a lot of shifting where I'm at. You know, like really um, leading with helping other people lead like when, when I do my success club shout outs it's not a number it's this is how many lives we're helping each month and then the next month focusing on helping more whenever I talk about things it's our team it's we it's I cannot believe we've helped this many people it's sharing um 
myself authentically, especially like with the ultimate reset, I'm not a cook. Like just being like so real that it's like other people believe that they can do it too because we're all just trying to figure it out together. Does that make sense? No, it totally does. Um, it totally. It and totally then I believe in people so much more than they believe in themselves because I'm genuinely like, if I can start this business where I was at, at that depression level, at that, and not saying everyone has to have some crazy story like that, but just drawing out stuff in people. Like, I love the example that Joshua did the other day. I don't know if you guys are in the Revive group, but he was like, there's a difference between someone losing 50 pounds and sharing on Facebook. Oh, I, I lost 50 pounds, but I'm not where I want to be yet. And um, if you need help, then maybe I can help you. I'm like, fuck no, you lost 50 pounds. Like that is huge. It's like for me with the ultimate reset, I don't cook. Like that was a hard, like I'm owning it. I'm like so proud of myself. Like the bells and whistles are going off. It's like finding that confidence and then finding that confidence for my coaches in the little things. Like, oh my God, you're a mom, you're doing personal development and you're cooking for your family. Like own that, like get excited, get proud. And like, just pumping yourself up, even if it's with the little daily things. Like, I think we always shoot for like, okay, I'll be happy when this happens, or I'm going to be a successful coach when I'm one star. Or, I'm going to be a success. When, when I hit five star, I'll be happy. When I hit a thousand dollars, I'll be happy. That's not how it works. It's like owning it now and being there now and being happy with where you're at now and owning the fact that you're doing something that's freaking awesome. That's, changing people's lives and a lot of coaches on my team they will make the assumption for other people well she won't be a good coach because she doesn't have the time or well, I don't think this person would be good at it no there are people we have so much to offer aside from health and fitness so um sorry I just went off on like a little <laughs> soapbox there but I really just get fired up because we do have so many tools to offer people. And I feel like it's just tapping into that um, area of like what's holding them back. And a lot of people want to make excuses. And so it's figuring out um, why they're doing that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Does anyone have anything else? A long answer. <laughs> no, I mean that was great. I, I, you know, it's definitely something that that I struggle with um, personally, which is why I asked you to do this call. So I took a lot of notes, um, and obviously I had some questions from it. And I think it's, I think it's really good. I think like you know, I, I do some of the things, but I need to do more of them. Um, and I, I really like, I think a lot, I like the empowering thing. I try to do that a lot. Like I'm pushing some, I've been pushing some people out of their comfort zone and doing like live, you know, what is coaching calls and like going live on the team page. Cause I'm sorry, video makes a lot of people nervous, myself included. So yeah. Um, anyone have anything else? Questions? You guys have a nine star coach on the call. Like you know i think focusing one thing brain. focusing on your strengths and not focusing on your weaknesses like my strengths are my strengths and i can empower myself through that and a lot of times we get sucked into focusing on what we are weak at like when you did our team call it was great because you're uber organized and like you've got a structure i don't have that but instead of focusing on what i don't have I focus, I, I learn and I grow in that area, but I focus on like what my strengths are. And so I really think it's a lot of this is such a mindset thing, you know, cause you get it in a tendency to go in this downward spiral and really you guys, what we focus on, it, that's where all of our energy goes, you know? Yeah. Aggressive nothing. Katie, where are you? You usually come in with the questions. I think she's on the phone. Do you need me to unmute you? I'll unmute her. Katie? What? Oh, she's in the shower. Okay, sweet. <laughs> awesome, Chrissy. <laughs> okay, that's fun. <laughs> um, okay, 
So I guess um, Katie was so excuse this. She's showing the cooking balls when she's in the shower. So um, all right, I'll remute her. Does anyone have anything else they want to ask while we have Carly? About anything? No? Because they're quiet. Okay. All right, well, thank you so, so, so much for the first recording. It's going to get this done. I don't know what that's, Katie Shower. I don't know who that is. Um, and um, yeah, if you have anything, you know, feel free to reach out and I can chat with Carly, or I'm sure that she'd be happy to post a, uh, a chat from you guys if you come up with anything after the call. Yeah, absolutely. Message me. Um, I'm totally up for helping out any way that I can. And this was fun. Thank you for having me. I yeah, thanks for coming. I, it was funny. I've actually heard from a couple of your coaches since the call. So that's been neat to like coach them through their first free group. So yeah, it's been great. Okay. Thanks guys. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye. Bye y'all.